Hey everybody, good afternoon. It's June 18th, 2023. This is the next update. Welcome for the Super Tunia window boxes. Uh, so first off, I'll say that it is finally getting into the time of the year where you have to increase the watering frequency. You gotta increase how often you fertilize, the, uh, the strength of the fertilizer, and the reason why is because it's getting to that point now where it's about 88 to 90 today. It's gonna be the same temperature tomorrow. There hasn't been many days of rain. I don't think there's been rain for about 10 or 11 days, which is one of the reasons why they look nice because when you have a heavy rain, it'll knock a lot of the flowers off. Uh, next thing you'll notice is the hedges and the super tunias are about to touch each other which I don't want because if you think about any insects that might be on the ground that could potentially harm the plant, perhaps insects that don't fly, they'd be able to go up the hedge and then touch the super tunias and that's how they can get into the box. And so you wanna do whatever you need to do to make sure that they look good for as long as possible throughout the growing year. And if that includes, you know, cutting the hedges back or trimming the super tunias back, that's what you got to do. Uh, you never have to worry because they grow so, so aggressive that I could trim something up tomorrow. And by next week, it already, it doesn't even look like I trimmed it. So that's how they grow. And even though... They, they started off, as you remember, on the window, where they were going up the window. They've since fallen forward. And now, you can see that they start to grow buds on the top section where, where it already fell forward. But for like a couple weeks, it'll look, a kind, of, it'll look, look kind of bare on the top. But since then, it's filling in looking really nice you can see a lot of buds right there that are about to pop looking good then we go over to the railing which I think the railings right now are looking the best by far they just they look so well together the black cherries these are probably the best of all the black cherries that I've planted. One of the reasons is because it's on the edge of the box. So you have a nice gap here. They're getting a lot of sun and it looks like they're just having a great time right now. Uh, one thing I just noticed this week is I haven't checked all the boxes, but this box right here is currently under attack from aphids. There's not a lot of them, so I wouldn't say it's infested, but maybe I could go under here and show you. I don't even have to. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on this leaf right here. Okay, do you see that? There's a mature aphid right there and a couple of the nymphs. And they're coming. They usually hang out on the underside of the leaves. I've never really treated my super tunias in the past, and this is the third year I've been doing them, but I've never been good at treating them preventatively, but I've changed that. I already bought some sprays, and we'll go up here and check it out. So this year I have some BT, which will fight against caterpillars. And then I got some of the Bonide um, Systemic Insect Killer. I'm gonna mix them up and spray them together. Uh, and also, each time that I have a lot of growth that comes over, this way I'm gonna cut it off and trim off anything that looks bad or dead because the less growth that there is, that means the less chances that aphids will have to you know, infest it. But I'm going to start spraying this because if I don't, it's going to give it about another two or three weeks and they're going to destroy these, believe it or not. 
So, gonna start spraying everything probably once or twice a week before I trim them back in July. And again, that's the reason why right there. That little thing right there. So, going over to this box. This box has fallen forward recently. As you can see, that's why it looks so bare up top. But don't worry, it's gonna fill in. There's also a bird nest in there, so I haven't touched anything. This one is definitely the, mo uh, the most interesting because it still has not fallen forward. So look at all that growth that has not fallen forward yet. It's still shooting up the window, easily two and a half feet up. It's really wild to see that. I mean, look at the difference between those two. Until that falls forward, you'll see, well, when it does, you're gonna see a lot of bareness, and then it starts to pop again, like the one all the way over there. So everything here is gonna be getting sprayed unless there's any baby birds. Like I know there's a bird nest in this one, so I'm not gonna spray that. But gotta get the insects under control because even if the aphids are only on this one, they can easily jump over to this one and you have a disaster on your hands. And what I've learned is to not spray anything during the heat of the day. You either have to do it in the morning or you wait for the sun to go down. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait for the sun to go down. And I knew they were gonna happen. I know the, every year, no matter what, the aphids pop up. I think their they're larvae or their eggs, they're just in the soil. They, when, when it gets hot out, they hatch. They can grow wings and they can fly. It, it's just, it, that's just how they are. So now, let's, check them out from the street level. And there you have it from the street. Definitely looking nice. Everything's, everything's really full right now. Uh, they're getting a ton of fertilizer again tons of water they need it you could see what I was talking about so you see the black cherries right there they don't match with the with this with the the other colors of the super tunias you know the blue skies and the bubble gum and so when you see the black cherry it looks like there's a problem but when you look close it's just red flowers they don't have the same color spectrum but looking nice the, the window over there is crazy, as you can see, but everything's looking quite nice. So, uh, again, started uh, the last 10 days, I've been fertilizing in intervals of two times a day at 30 minutes each with the fertilizer injector. So, and again, that's, I have 24 drip emitters so at a half gallon an hour is what they are rated at. Basically giving these boxes, uh, I'm only using 12 gallons of water a day. Because um, when you use a drip emitter, you can really concentrate your water. You don't waste anything. But um, I'm going to have to start cranking that up now. Probably 40 minutes twice a day. That's what I've done today. Because when you get hotter temperatures, you just need more water. And again, the drip system has been the best thing that I've ever experienced when it comes to um, growing plants, you know, ornamental plants, because you just go over there, you hit the button and it's on. You don't have to pull out any watering cans. You don't have to pull out any fertilizer, except when you have to um, add new fertilizer to the injector, which is really simple and you're just good to go. And you just pay attention to your fertilizer levels. And when, you're, when you've used up all your fertilizer, you just add more to the system. And you could set it to fertilize, you know, at a very fast rate or at a medium rate or at a slow rate. 
And so that's been, without that, I would have to be out here, you know, hour and a half a day mixing fertilizer by hand, getting on the ladder to, it, it was just so much work last year, but I did it all by hand last year and got water everywhere, which caused a lot of mold. So this is just the best way to do it. Anyway, I hope you like what you see and tune in next week.